The water now is structured. It's an information storage device. The proof of that statement, I will show you this week, is that we can now see that information stored in the water with ultraviolet spectrophotometry. That means when I look at the transmission of water in the ultraviolet region between three and 4,000 angstrom units, a new set of bands appear, which did not appear before in the water that had not been treated. These are permanent changes, meaning that I can take this water one day, one week, one month later, and I see the same spectrum. What I'm going to show you now, this has cost me one year of work and about a thousand experiments. This line refers to the water from 350 nanometer down to 200. This is the beginning of the experiment. I pass the water once through the equipment and here is a whole new adsorption band of water developed from just transferring a thought form from the crystal into the water itself. And you can see how large this band is. It extends all the way up to here. And now we made another quantum leap. I found the extreme importance of shamanistic drums. When you beat a drum, you structure water. It is structured when you deal with these shamanistic drums. When you combine the beat of a drum with the crystals, an additional set of bands appear. A whole additional code of information is created. Because the crystal is a transducer for these vibrations and drives it directly into the bloodstream. You see here, my friends, the starting, the backbone of a whole new science and technology. And that means that we can take in the future water and program that water to have the quality we want for the health giving energies we will consume and take in through this water. The medicine of the future. Water is multi-dimensional. It is at least three-dimensional. Now, when water molecule, this one here, starts to form in space, we form then a unit cell of water. And when that unit cell becomes rigid, that becomes a crystal. This then, when the entropy has been lowered sufficiently, locks in space and forms a crystal. That is ice. That requires a certain amount of energy to be added to it by the process of withdrawal of heat until the energy has been built up and suddenly those atoms and molecules of water lock in space and form a crystal structure. The most beautiful example of these is ice crystals. They are hexagonal, six-sided, as a quartz crystal. They have the beautiful dendritic formations from the nucleus where they are initiated from a drop of particle of dust or an oscillating molecule of water. And 
they are continually different. There have been thousands of pictures taken of ice crystals. Now, we go to the next level. And look at water. Uh, we go back to here again. Here is what bulk water looks like. A series of unit cells of tetrahedron-shaped molecular form. This is called bulk water. You have one, two positive charges on the outer periphery of this sphere, and then internally two negative charges from the oxygen to balance the two positive charges. That means you have an exceedingly sensitive electronic molecule, the minutest of charge, positive or negative, will cause this molecule to twist, to lock, to form in space. Now, I told you a moment ago where I were to lower temperature. As I lower temperature, I'm extracting excess energy from the water. I come to a moment where these structures start to spin and link together in a pattern. And that pattern is a tetrahedron. And I'll show you the picture of what a tetrahedron looks like. And once that tetrahedron forms in space of this fluid water that is cooling, they start to bing, 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 bing. They fit together. They develop a consciousness, a memory, a knowing of what they were designed to do and to be. The remarkable thing is all of the crystallographic forms that we have in nature now, and there are seven major classes, can be formed in water itself. I repeat this statement carefully to you. Water, in the process of crystallization into ice, will exhibit all of the patterns of the crystallographic world around us. It is the personification in a single bit of matter of all that is. It's a very, very profound and meaningful statement. They have discovered this in the ice in both Antarctica and the Arctic by drilling cores hundreds of thousands of feet and pulling these core samples out and carefully pulling micro plugs under refrigeration of the ice and they find under the microscope all of the patterns of crystallographic forms that we have in nature. What we have found in our laboratory is that the energy of mind projected through a crystal will structure water just like it was frozen into ice. The remarkable and unique differentiation is that that water, when it is structured the way I am talking to you now, with mind and with thought, remains fluid but structured. That type of category is called a liquid crystal, a mesophase, a mesomorphic transition. And I put now 
almost 27 years of study into this type of structure. It is organized, it's holding information, and it takes the minutest charge to release it and to come back to its normal water bulk characteristic. We speak of vital water. We speak of holy water. We speak of Lourdes water. We speak of the sacred springs. Each one of these statements I find to be true. When I have studied waters from various sacred locales, I find a structure in that water which is unique from the bulk water. I got a sample of water from a sacred spring in Hungary, and it exhibits a energy level that transcends anything I have seen anywhere. Got a little tiny vial. I take a drop of that water and put it in my reverse osmosis water, and that water immediately has that charge, which was in the original 